Today I'm going to speak for the first time without notes because there are things I want to say that the people who write my speeches would not allow me to say. And after I'm finished, myself and Robert Singer may have to leave and hide away in some place. Anti-Semitism. First of all, in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, there was no anti-Semitism because people saw what happened during the Shoah. They saw the pictures, and nobody wanted to be associated with the Nazis. People understood. Then we got into the 80s and 90s, and it just started to have people who did not know. And today, three generations later, and almost 80 years later, a whole group of people do not know what happened to the Holocaust. In country after country, there is different speeches. And then there's surveys. And the question is, a vast majority of young people have no idea what happened during the Holocaust. They knew there's a man named Hitler and Mussolini, and they were strong people. And what we've seen more and more is that through the internet, which are filled with lies, and through many things, there is a growth of anti-Semitism, a major growth. But this is caused not only by lack of education, but also, and also the internet, but a whole new populist movement that is taking over throughout the world. Today, country after country, starting to have different laws that negate part of the Holocaust, negate what happened. But also what happened is that these countries, many of them, say, we're not anti-Semitic. We're friends with Israel and we're friends with the United States. It happens over and over and over again. There's a second question. Many of you here are parliamentarians and you have the problems of staying in office. There's only so much you can say. You can't fight with the country. In the case of Israel, we've seen two trends happening over and over again. One, Israel has its own problems internally. And at the same time, there is a strong movement in Israel, which is right of center, which is more orthodox. Many of the Jews today in Europe and throughout the world are not orthodox, whether reformed or secular or conservative. And what we've seen over and over again is these people feel alienated very much from Israel. And we've seen also in the United States, which are very, very much is, is, has great prosperity and great strength because of our president. But because of that, it's America first, make America great again. And although America is one of the strongest countries pro-Jewish, pro-Israel, we also do not have the ability the country to go out and protect the various Jewish organizations throughout the world. And the answer is, what can be done? What should be done? And what can we, the Jewish people, in various countries, from Iceland to Finland to Eastern Europe to Canada to many other places, that feel alienated, that are alone, how do we fight the battles? How do we fight the battles of anti-Semitism? And one of the things we've found more and more is that there is a feeling of many Jewish communities throughout the world that they're alone. 
that they have no one there to turn to. I believe that what we must do, we must have Israel once again engage locally. What we have to do is have Israel once again to be the, not only <clears throat> the strong country, but we must be able to have Israel come into the various countries, not just talking about Aliyah, but talking about helping the Jewish people. We must have the U.S. then realize that one of the things, one of the great strengths of our country is the fact that we must reach out to the Jewish communities all over and protect them. We see also things coming from the, from the Islamic world um, in the sense that very, very much the Palestinians could not, and, the, and many of these countries could not defeat Israel uh, militarily, could not defeat Israel economically. What they've done is to try to defeat Israel politically. We see it in the UN, where country after country, and we see our 26 resolutions coming out in the UN, 23 are against Israel and three against other countries. We see that because they're putting all their effort into um, fighting against Israel politically. And Israel, at the same time, does not spend the money and the effort to counter it because they're competing with the whole world. We must do everything we can to change this dynamics. One of the things I've been a believer in, everyone knows that, is a peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. I don't know what happens in June, but it's a critical time for us. We see what happened yesterday, the day before in Gaza, and why it's happening. And my concern is, if there's no peace, that thing gets worse and worse, not better and better. Um, I believe very strongly that the role of the World Jewish Congress cannot be out there doing more than just helping the local Jewish communities all over, but we're, we're only one organization. We must have the world behind us. We must be able to reach out from the left and the right. This anti-Semitism just doesn't come from the right, it comes from the left. It comes from everybody who feels very strongly, and they listen and they say, we're not gonna let the Jews who control the world control us. It's a good narrative, and I'm here to say we must work together. This is an important forum. This is a forum we have countries, people from all over. We have parliamentarians who are there talking the truth. But very often today, the truth is stopped because many of these countries control the media, control the TV, control what's happening, and people only hear what they want to hear. Uh, it's a dangerous world out there, and I say it's a, it's a perfect storm. We must do everything we can to stop it. Um, through my schools, we've done some things, but we can't be alone. We must all work together, and we must reach out to Israel, and we must reach out to the United States more and say to them, let's all work together for one purpose, and the purpose is to find the ability for the Jewish people, not only in Israel and the United States, but worldwide, to live in peace and not have fear. There should be no reason that children fear wearing a yarmulke and walking down the street. What does that say to these children? What does it say about being Jewish? And it's a bad sign. Interesting enough, here in Ukraine, I must compliment the Ukrainian government, um, I've seen very, very little anti-Semitism. I've seen the same thing in Russia, um, because in two countries that really have had the government standing up and helping the Jewish people. But there are many, many other countries that we have, the worst being, I think, England. Um, and it's a very dangerous time. But there are other countries that are out there. We must do something. This forum, if we do anything together, we must find common cause. We must be able to pull things together. And the Jewish people are one people from the most liberal to the most conservative, the most politically, the most religiously, go across the board. We must be one people. 
we can have people saying um, we can't have fights between the religious and the non-religious. We're one people. We have to work together. That's all I can say. And I'm sorry I didn't use my notes, but I think it's more important to say what has to be said. I probably will not be invited back to many countries, um, but that's okay because I think someone has to say what has to be said. God bless you all. Thank you. And uh, now uh, we have an important thing to do. Ronald, we are very grateful for everything you have done and continue to do for Ukraine. On behalf of Jews of Ukraine and our Jewish community, it's our distinct honor and privilege to present you to the highest award of Jewish Confederation of Ukraine, Sheptitsky Medal. For that, let me invite to the scene Chief Rabbi of Ukraine, Yakov Dublai, and his uh, Bittitude Svetoslav Shevchuk, head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. I just want to say a few words about the medal that we're about to, uh, to uh, give to Ambassador Lauder, which has on the front of it a picture of uh, Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky, who was the head of the Ukrainian, uh, who was the head of the Ukrainian uh, Catholic Church during World War II, and documented, saved close to 200 Jews in the monasteries of the Catholic Church throughout Western Ukraine. I personally have met a number of them who are still alive. Some of them were very, very famous and important people throughout the world, famous Jews. So the idea of the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine came about after a trip to uh, Canada where Metropolitan Sheptitsky was recognized by the Canadian Parliament as a righteous Gentile who saved so many Jews. And the idea came up to make a medal. It was the idea of the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine, the picture of Metropolitan Sheptitsky, and a quote from Psalms, who will champion my cause against the wicked who will stand up for me against the evildoers. And on the back, this unique symbol of the Ukrainian trident and the Star of David, along with the name of Metropolitan Andrei Sheptitsky and Jewish Confederation of Ukraine. The first awardee was Jim Tamerdy, president of the uh, Ukraine Jewish Encounter, after which the Ukraine Jewish Encounter became a partner with the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine in awarding this medal every year. Uh, next to me stands my good friend is Beatitude uh, Svetislav Shevchuk, who's now the head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. And traditionally, we have uh, awarded this together as an initiative of the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine, but along with the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. And it's our honor today to give it to my president. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of the World Jewish Congress. Uh, uh, Ambassador Ronald Lauder, who has done great things to bring together Ukrainians and Jews. One of the greatest things he's done is help found the first Jewish day school in Ukraine, which is today also one of the most successful. But he's done also a lot for Jewish education throughout Ukraine and many, many things to bring together Ukrainian Jewish communities. So together, you just said we should do it together, okay. religious, not religious, Orthodox, Catholic. У світі, де сьогодні все міняється, нема нічого стабільного. So nothing is stable uh, today. Is, uh, a human being is looking for fixing points, something that is not changing, uh, which is eternal. Very often uh, we say that these are eternal, eternal values, respect to the human being, to human life and dignity, irrespectively of uh, the uh, nationality, ethnic uh, or religion. It's very important for us to have uh, all people who are carrier of the 
Miss uh, Velus. Uh, such a uh, person uh, was my princess, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Andrei Sheptiski. Uh, it is very important that we have seen that there are also people today who are carriers, the same values. Uh, and it is my pleasure today that this uh, medal uh, uh, established by the Ukrainian uh, Jewish uh, Confederation uh, uh, is uh, uh, awarded to the President of the World uh, uh, Jewish uh, Community. And today, on behalf of our church, we want to welcome you as well. If there had been more people like Shafisky, we'd have a different world at that time. But there are people like him today, all over. In every country, there are people standing up and talking. We must recognize them and work together, because good people, good will always win against evil. And what the danger we have is indifference. Elie Wiesel one time said to me, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. And too often today we find people indifferent to what is happening to the Jewish people. We must do everything and we are happy that there are people like this in the world and I'm honored to receive this medal. But this medal doesn't belong to me, it belongs to people all over, people in this room who stand up and do everything. And I'll tell you, the bravest people I know are the, are the people who stand up to be Jewish and are sending their children to Jewish schools because what it takes to do that and the courage. But also from the different religious groups, we thank you very, very much for standing up with us as one people. God bless you.